Hello, hello everybody, and welcome to episode 3 of Painting Magnus the Red, a long overdue episode 3. Uh, about a year's and a half worth overdue. Um, in today's episode, what we're going to do is focus on all the details um, other than the feathers. So we're going to work on his horns, his, I call it a mane, I guess it's his hair. Uh, all the bone areas, uh, the shaft on the uh, staff, uh, the, the gem areas, the cloth, uh, just, just a bunch of the little stuff basically finish up all the details. So the first thing we're going to do is the horns. Um, as you can see I base coated the horns on here. I used uh, Mahovi White and then I gave it a fairly heavy wash with uh, Strong Tone. So what we're going to go do now is go back over with our Mojave White. Um, I'm not using any additives to the paint. I'm not using any uh, any uh, uh, glaze medium like I usually do. It's just straight up paint and water. As always, it's, it's pretty much a 50-50 mix. 50% paint, 50% water. Get that down here, mix it up real quick, and let's go to town on it. So I'm gonna use what am I gonna use as an example here for you guys? Something that's easy for me to reach. I think I'm going to use uh, this guy here, and the uh, the general general. Uh, method here will be the same on the entire model so what I'm going to do now is just fill in the bone areas with my base color with my Mojave white leaving the uh, leaving the wash in the darkest recesses obviously and that'll probably take a couple of coats for it to cover the way I'd like it to so I'm just gonna keep going through here cover it all up. Uh, obviously, as always, I'm going to do most of this off camera, and I'll come back to show you guys the results. Alright guys, so let's talk about what I did here for a second. I'll walk you through it. So, I did go in there with the uh, with the base color, but it did, number one, I didn't really go into much of a technical side before I started doing this with you guys just because I wasn't sure how I was going to do it. So on the horns, I did decide to go in with the uh, with the lines on here to kind of define the pattern in the horns. Um, something like, like the talons here or whatever you want to call them, I did not go in with the lines. I actually just went through you know regular steps of highlighting. Same with the bone over here. Uh, this might change though because... What it actually originally looks like is like this. It's much brighter. Uh, then I went in there with a really watered down uh, strong tone, which is about 50% uh, wash to 50% water. And I am bringing this down one more time, uh, just like so. And what we're going to do is go back in one more time with the uh, uh, with the Mojave White. But I'm going to let this dry and I'll come back to show you guys coming back in there with the Mojave White how it's looking. Because I was it was a little too stark so I did want to bring it down a bit. Uh, but now what we're going to do is actually work on bringing it back up in certain areas so that it pops a little bit more. But uh, yeah, so far this is what the uh, what the bow's looking like. So we'll see where we end up with this in, in a couple of minutes here. But I'm gonna let this dry and then I'll come back to it. All right, guys. So this is where we stand on the horns. I'm actually liking around the horns on the bone itself. I'm actually liking the way it's coming out. So it's a little bit more subdued than I thought it was going to end up being. But it actually looks looks aged. I guess for lack of a better word, and I like that. I like the fact that it looks aged. So, I don't know how far I explained this. The reason I didn't show you guys 
my method of actually painting this uh, on screen is I wasn't sure whether I was going to do lines like I did on the horns, uh, the claws, and the uh, the nails here, or whether I was going to do a regular highlight uh, a pattern like I did on some of the other parts. So I decided to do both on depending on the parts. So. What we're doing now is, you saw me obviously do the, um, the brown washes on all of these. What I'm going to do now is I still have a uh, really diluted Mojave White here. So now I'm going to add that line pattern to, to everything and this is basically going to be... I'll see how stark it the, this, this ends up being, but this might actually end up being my last highlight. So I'm just going to kind of really gently accentuate the areas that are popping or that are supposed to be popping uh, in a linear in a linear motion kind of deal so it does add those lines to the bone down here and I don't know how well this is gonna work but that's the plan at least um, as you can see, I'm probably going to have to go over this a few times. So uh, while while you're actually watching me do this, because I do kind of want to show you guys just real quick how this turns out, um, I, I'm gonna I reiterated or reiterated I did mention this in my last video. I'm gonna mention it again. I've been watching a lot of Twitch lately with with painters on Twitch, and I've really been enjoying it. So in the um, in the video description, I'm also linking a few channels that I've really been enjoying, at least a few streamers on Twitch. So you guys feel free to check out if that's something you want to... Or if Twitch is something that you're uh, you're interested in. It's live, obviously, so it's, you know, can't really fast forward or, or anything like that. But it's still pretty cool. I'm really enjoying the interaction with, with the painters and so on and so forth on there. That's really helping me get a lot more work done because I can just watch people and talk to people painting while I paint myself. So, um, yeah, that's actually been... So, like, you can barely see it on here, but there is a bit of a linear pattern already developing. And for sake of time, I am going to continue placing this one layer of pure Mojave White on the entire model, and then I'll come back and show you guys where we're at. Okay, um, so I went over just some of the tip, tips and, and, and just kind of kind of work that color back in there. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to add uh, pure white into this mix just for one final edge highlight slash top highlight. And then I won't really add that much, maybe just a drop in here to really accentuate some of the edges on there. So that's all I will add in there. But before we do that, before we move on with this, actually, hold on, let me water this down just a little bit more. There's a couple, couple of points I want to make about this. Okay, the first one is you've noticed I didn't put any glaze medium in here like I normally would. Now, I paint with glaze medium religiously. Most of what I do has glaze medium in it because I paint via glazing for the most part. reason I didn't add any glaze medium on here is because I actually wanted the paint to be a little chalkier than usual, if that makes sense. Let me try explaining that. This is bone we're painting. I didn't want it to be uniform, and I didn't want it to look clean. So like, for instance, let me see if I can get this in focus. Yes, I can down here. This area here looks a little rough. That's okay. Even though that wasn't uh, intentional, I'm okay with it turning out the way it did because again, this is bone. It's supposed to be a little rough. Um, I wasn't particularly careful with with how these lines turned out, or which direction these, well, not direction, directional, they're all, they're all horizontal, or at least they follow the shape of the, the, the curves and stuff. But I wasn't super, 
careful with it, or, or like how the wash dried, for instance. So the reason I mixed my wash, my brown wash 50-50 with water and 50% and wash, 50% water, is I didn't want it going on too heavy. So like you see here where it pulled, that's okay because it didn't pull too heavily and I was able to go over it with the, with the base color too, with the thin glaze of the base color, obviously. It covered it to a point where it looks natural. So like same for you know same for down here. I let it pull up a little bit. But the reason I didn't use it too thick is because like here on the uh, on the horn over here or whatever you want to call this, this is the actual wash pooling. So this isn't an effect I worked on. This is the wash pooling. But the fact that it was thin, it only really thickly pooled right at the edge and over here it didn't pull as much which actually gave it a more natural looking effect a more realistic effect so it's that those kind of those kind of things it's just you know paint consistency or how much water you want it can save you a lot of hassle uh, just just working on your project because it just it, it can make your life so much easier uh, depending on what you're trying to achieve. So now what we're doing is I'm taking my 50-50 or my uh, Mojave White that I added the uh, the pure white to. And I'm just going to hit the very tips of the edges on all of this just to kind of accentuate the, uh, the edges where the light hits them. And I'm going to call the bone down. Done. So uh, I'll finish this up and I'll come back to you guys. And we're back again. Not sure how much of a difference you guys can see, but uh, there certainly is a, bit of, a little bit of a difference. Uh, I didn't want to, again, I don't want to pop too much, but just enough to kind of raise the edges and bring up the highlights just a little bit. And I think we've accomplished that, so I can safely say that the bone is now finished. What's next? Well, the big elephant in the room and the one thing that originally turned me off from painting or continuing to paint this last year that burned me out on this was the blue. And I don't know how many times I've bitched about this in previous videos or this video series. I haven't, again, it's it's been a while, but I'm going to bitch about it now because it, it I'm going to continue bitching about this until Games Workshop does something about it. Games Workshop does not know how to sculpt, or well, digitally sculpt, now cloth. The folds in this thing are ridiculous. The folds in this thing should not exist in the shape and pattern of folds that they exist in. So what throws me off, especially painting such a large area, is trying to shade and highlight something that has such ridiculous, unnatural folds in this. That's the only way I know how to explain it. So that's the elephant in the room, and that's what we're going to try and attempt to finish tonight, because I feel the sooner I get this out of the way, the more motivated I'll be to finish the entire figure. So let's get going. Now, there's another thing. Since you guys, those of you guys who haven't been following my channel since my last episode of this series, my painting methods have changed a little bit. So in the past, I would just you know, use my base coat and then apply little bits of highlights to each coat and I basically layer. I don't layer anymore. I primarily glaze. So, what does that mean? That means I prepare every single color that I'm going to use for myself prior to painting. So, black is going to be my shadow color navy blue is my base color mediterranean blue is going to be one of my highlights and the final highlight is going to be sky blue i'm not i don't think i'm going to bring this up to pure white but we'll see when we're done and i'm going to try and explain this to you guys best i can as to how i do this um, I may end up time-lapsing this if I can get myself into a comfortable enough position to actually paint this whole thing, but not making any promises until I start. 
Next thing, next primary ingredient in this is the thing I can't live without is my Vallejo glaze medium. So every single uh, every single dab of paint here gets some glaze medium. It's pretty much one part paint, one part glaze medium. On top of that, everything is going to get a drop of water with it as well. So these are all basically, all this paint is essentially going to end up in the consistency of glazes, or in, as a glaze consistency, which is what I'm going for, so I can glaze all this in. Those of you guys that aren't familiar with glazing, I'm going to try and explain this as best I can, which in turn I'm sure is going to make this video super long, but you know what, I don't really care anymore. <laughs> um, there was a point where I tried to make my videos as short as possible since I know number one the way the algorithms on YouTube work a lot of times uh, long videos don't get displayed in the search results on top or anything and people also have short attention spans I've been monitoring my uh, my watch time my viewer attention but you know what uh, I don't care if you don't like it then, then don't watch it obviously if you like it I appreciate it I'm going to do it the way I want to do it, so screw it. Anyhow, my four glazes are ready. I'm going to leave this here so that you guys can see it for the time being, at least. And make my sh make sure I'm comfortable here. Yes, I am. Okay, so... And let me just do this. Now, I won't leave this here because since I'm right-handed, I can't actually reach over for the paint that way, so I'm going to leave this here. Does here work? Yeah, kind of. Good enough. So, the way this works is essentially I'm going to grab some some of my uh, for my first highlight color, get it on my brush, and then wipe most of it off on my damp paper towel over here. This is the reason I keep my damp paper towel on my palette here. And now we're just going to slowly start applying it. Let's see how how thick it is. So what I can do, and I gotta move my water over here so I can work quickly. It's still wet. Clean my brush, lick it off real quick, and then come back in here with just pure water, or saliva water I guess, and just kind of fan it out spread this out now I will admit this is my first time glazing blue on such a large surface so this may not come out as smooth as I want it to the first time around but that's okay well so like if it doesn't come out smooth what I can do is then go back get my base color and glaze my base color in here and so on and so forth and basically it's just going back and forth on all these paints until I'm satisfied with what I'm getting uh, essentially now what I'm doing here is if you just saw me I grabbed a little bit of the Mediterranean blue and a little bit of navy blue mixed it together and again going back in here and adding it in here um, there's no real rhyme or reason as to how I mix it or what I mix or what I apply. It's whatever I think, whatever I think belongs where it's going, obviously. And that's, for me, that's the problem I find with painting, painting Games Workshop cloth. Or especially on this scale. It's just, there's no rhyme or reason to these folds, like... Where is this fold here coming out of, and why is this indented here, and such a large indent here, and then this is kind of... Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to stop bitching about it for the sake of the video, but... I'm trying to at least give you guys a better understanding of what the hell I'm bitching about, I guess. So anyways, I just, yeah, this is going to take me probably a couple of hours, but this is essentially the method I use on here, is just I'm going to go back and forth, and I'm going to work on one section at a time, and if it comes out rough, 
then I'll go in there with my base color or my shadow color even and and fix it and glaze over it and keep going kind of deal until I'm happy with it so I mean there's there's certain things that you know I can sit here for hours upon hours just doing this glazing refining the glazes and then you know mixing mixing different shades in together and so on and so forth but I think it actually it's the best way that I found that I'm comfortable I guess it's the most forgiving way let me put it that way it takes a long time but it's such a forgiving method to use only because you can screw up with it's very hard to screw up with a glaze because even if you make your transitions too harsh like here like right here you can see the transitions obviously I can just go back over with another glaze real quick and, and fix it and change it and so and move on you know so it's it's just a very forgiving method for me and even though it's time consuming and there's probably a lot of better methods out there that I'm just not aware of or that I don't care to learn but this works for me and so this is what I've been using um, anyhow this is so Again, I'm using a mix here, my first layer of, of this Mediterranean blue and this navy blue. I'm just mixing them together. And I'm going over all the, all the high portions here. I am going to do this off camera because even though I would love to do a time lapse for you guys to show you how I'm doing this, this is incredibly uncomfortable for me and if I continue doing this in this position for two hours my back is not going to let me straighten out anymore um, so I am going to continue this off camera and I'll come back come back periodically I'll come back halfway through and I'll show you guys where we're at do this for another few minutes on camera once we're halfway through and then come back towards the end so I'll be back when I'm halfway through when I'm about halfway through with this okay so we're about halfway there um, this is where I stand halfway there so basically I brought the highlights up to pure Mediterranean blue and the shadows down to pure navy blue um, still a lot of rough in places as you can see down here and so on and so forth but this will be blended in with the uh, with the black as well over here so on and so forth. This is about halfway done. So I didn't do anything on this side because I kind of wanted to give you guys a better idea of the process. Um, I know I explained it a little bit before I started it, but I feel like this actually needs a little more explaining so you guys can understand how I do this. So this is going to take, this is going to be a long video yet again, but I think it'll be beneficial for you guys to actually see the process. So again, I've got my navy blue, my black, my Mediterranean blue and my what was it sky blue yeah my sky blue 50 50 mix of paint um, glaze medium with a few drops of water added so it's it's really a really thin consistency here so what I do is I get some paint on my brush then I wipe it almost all of it off on my damp paper towel over here and then I come into the area I'm gonna highlight and start laying down my coat. Now, this first coat is basically just kind of uh, kind of sketching out the highlight, so it doesn't have to be super smooth. As long as you get the general idea. Um, but essentially, what I do is coming in with with these coats of again. This is only up to Mediterranean blue. It's so like here I can already tell you it's drying way too thick on this side. But the beautiful thing about these glazes is they take so long to dry that even though you screw up, I can just clean my brush, go in here and start fanning everything out even more with just a wet brush. Um, granted, there will be some coffee staining here if you wait too long. Like right here, this is already starting to, starting to stain right here, down here. Uh, so then what you do is you take your navy blue, you come in and you start filling that in, even while it's wet, because that'll blend so much better. So essentially what I do with this technique is really just go back and forth between my two colors, or even mix them 
two like I'm doing here in between and just lay the paint down and see like I did here this is still wet just lay that paint down and now I'm just gonna feather out the edges here while it's still wet so this is I guess this is a form of wet blending too feather out the edges while it's still wet and if I've screwed up after it dries, if I realize I screwed up after it dries, then I can always just go in there with my base color and start out further on the edge and kind of fill it in just basically back and forth like this between the highlights and, and the base color until you're happy with, with you know, what the result and until you're happy with how smooth it is. Now this isn't super smooth, as you can see right here in the middle but I'm happy with it so so I left it as especially since it's especially since it's like down down here which is kinda you can't really see it that well I kinda left it be I didn't bother smoothing it out there will be again black going in here and there will be more highlights but this is the general idea it's just a lot of back and forth and the reason I'm not doing this whole thing on camera is just because there is so much back and forth so this, the portion that you guys just watched a couple of minutes ago, this front of the uh, tabard here, I did yesterday, and it took me, all in all, I probably put about three hours into this so far, so I mean, yeah, it's just a lot of back and forth, and the more time you're willing to put into it, the smoother you can get your blends, and the smoother you can get your transitions, obviously, so it's basically just about, you know, being patient, and just being willing to put the time into it kind of deal you know so it, it, it's just basically how much time you're willing to invest in that's that's another reason I love this method is again this went on so thick here but I can just come into the edges while it's still uh, and just feather it out to make sure the transitions a little smoother Or, if it coffees things, and I just go in with my uh, base color, and same deal, and just mix it in on the edges here. Just like, I mean, it's, it's literally that simple, and it's just letting it dry and seeing where, where, what you achieved with it, you know? So, I mean, you can already see, you can already see right here, the highlight kind of starting to show through. Now, this is going to take a few more layers before it really, really has the impact that we're looking for, which is this. But, again, it's just putting, being patient and putting the time into doing this. Like, again, if I can do it, anybody can do it kind of deal. It's just, you know, practice your brush control first and foremost. And then just, just be patient with it. Move your paint around. It's a lot easier to move it around while it's wet. And when it's a glaze. So, yeah, you know, it's it, it's fairly simple. It's just basically knowing knowing the basic technique and then just putting the time and the patience into it to, to master it kind of deal. By no means am I a master of this, but the, 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 you guys get what I mean. So anyways, I'm going to continue this back end off camera. And out of curiosity, too, when I'm done, I'll tell you guys how long it took me. But I'll, I'll be back when it's done. All right, folks, so I went ahead and actually finished the blue to a point where I'm satisfied with it. Uh, what I ended up doing is... The portions you didn't see was just me doing an edge highlight with the sky blue. And then going in with a really, really thin glaze of black into, like, the deepest recesses and so on and so forth. So I actually think it looks really cool. Uh, it pops really nice, so I'm, I'm happy with it. Uh, what we're going to do next is all the leather areas, so like the belt, um, the book, and the little uh, sat or the little uh, thing right there that's holding the uh, the trinket there. Uh, what I'm going to base coat those with is some brown leather, and then we'll go in with some strong tone, and then we'll start doing edge highlighting, kind of a stippling method with pale skin to make it look worn. So let me put the base coat down, then I'll come back to you guys to show you what I'm doing. Okay, so... Number one, you see he's got different colored gloves. Um, I ran out of black gloves, and this is a separate session now that we're moving over, so I have to use blue gloves for the time being. Anyways, I base coated all the uh, leather parts 
with brown leather and I gave them a wash with strong tone. So now what we're going to do is start kind of stippling on edge highlights on here to really make it uh, make it look worn and so on and so forth. So the first thing we're going to do is just go back over with pure brown leather. Uh, just kind of all around the edges on here and we are kind of I mean I call this stippling but just kind of stippling on the edge highlight here and you don't have to be super neat with this again because it, it, we do want it to look almost random and worn and so on and so forth so so there's that give me one second because this camera is about to die okay so I went ahead and I also started laying down some highlights on the edges I went through two uh, layers of highlights and this is where we stand right now so this is where my highlight color is at now we're going to lay the very last one which is going to be the very brightest edge highlight so I'm gonna this time around instead of adding uh, the skin tone into my brown I will add some brown into my skin tone to make it really bright just like this So again, we're just going to kind of kind of really carefully stipple this on. The very edges here so that that it basically comes out looking worn. So that, just like that. Alright, so I'm going to do that all over here, and then I'll come back and uh, do the next part. Alright guys, let's uh, let's talk here for a second. So I did a lot more on him than just, uh, just finishing off what I left off to finish off with. Um, I actually finished off all the details, so I did the, uh, the base or the, the dreadnought arm because I realized he was standing in dreadnought arm and I'm like shit that's still another thing I have to paint so I did that real quick I added all the green portions in here especially like the runes in the um in the armor on the weapon and in his arm as well as the eye in his hand I did his eyes green as well uh, what else did I do I finished the blue you guys are here for the blue I did his hair I did his hair purple. So this is what his hair is like right now. Um, the reason I did this, reason I did this off camera is number one, oh, I'm keeping I'm keeping the staff black because I can figure out what the freak color to paint it. So this is staying black. Uh, the reason I decided to do most oh, and I also did this little feather here, a light blue. So. The reason I decided to do all of this off camera is because number one, I made it uh, I'm making it a point to finish this guy tonight. If I don't finish him tonight, it's never getting finished. Number two, I want to make this video the last video on him. Um, so I kind of did the details. I figured you guys wouldn't give a shit about off camera, and now we can move on to the most interesting part, which is going to be all the wings. Um, those of you wondering what colors I used, so on this little feather, uh, what is this, Adriatic Blue, um, glazed over with, uh, Navy Blue, and then I went back over with the Adriatic, uh, what else, for the green, I used a bunch of crap that I've put away since, I guess, for the green, I, you know, I haven't put it away, where the hell is it? Hold on. Where's my green? Oh, for the green, I used a base of a Black Forest Green, and then highlighted using So Yellow. Uh, for the purple, I used Violet, and highlighting with White. And this is where we stand right now. So the reason I did this little feather here 
a different kind of blue than everything else was because for the wings we're going from red to purple to blue to what I call this Adriatic blue and aquamarine so that's what the wings are going to end up going from from and to. The way we're going to do them is I'm going to apply all these as really thin glazes and then we're going to go back over starting to fill it in. So, first thing I'm going to do is change out my wet palette for, for a new sheet of paper and then I'll come back to you guys and we'll start laying some paint down so you actually see the process of it. Okay, so I got my paint pre-mixed and I'm kind of going to give you guys an idea of how I'm going to start this. So, I decided not to use the purple. I decided to only use the red, the blue, and the, um, the aquamarine or the Adriatic blue, basically. Uh, we'll see how it goes, because I mean, once I combine the blue with the red over here, it's going to turn into a purple anyway, so I think we'll be okay. So, basically, all I'm doing... Oh, by the way, this is... Uh, one third paint, one third uh, glaze medium, and one third water for all three of these mixes, by the way. So I have my uh, size 2 brush, which is a bit larger than, than what I'm normally using. Put some paint on my brush, wipe most of it off on my, uh, my damp paper towel over there, and then start going in onto this wing over here very lightly. And, and basically basically just filling stuff in um, I'm going to do this for the entirety of, of the wings and the feathers and so on and so forth and I'll come back to you guys so we can start laying on the uh, highlights afterwards and we're done uh, no we're not uh, I basically just went in and blocked in the, uh, from the darker color, from the darker blue to the lighter blue. Uh, just to kind of give myself a better idea of where the transitions are going to go. Yeah, it looks like shit right now. I, I realize that. Uh, so now what I'm going to do is I took... Uh, I just took some of my navy blue over here, 50-50 mix uh, paint and water. And now what I'm going to start doing is just start working it, working it in to the wings to kind of kind of bring out start bringing out the color and start deepening it a little bit in some of the transitions here and then what I'm gonna do is go back over with my reds in some of these areas and bring the red back out in some of them so I'll do that for the lighter and the darker or I'll do that for the darker blue first rather and then I'll go back in with uh, with the light blue and do the same to transition over into the light recesses here. But uh, again, this is gonna this is gonna take a good amount of time too. So I will come back and show you guys when that's done, just to give you a better idea. I mean, it's again, it's a very uh, very thin blue. I'm just gonna start working in a little bit more precisely now to kind of start bringing out the color where I want it as opposed to just mucking it like I was uh, like I did earlier to, uh, to accentuate it so just like that just kind of work it in there and as you can see I'm beating the crap out of this brush but that's okay <clears throat> I beat the crap out of it when I was doing the, um, the black coach anyhow so I'm not too worried about preserving it any longer. It's kind of nearing its uh, kind of nearing the end of its life here. So yeah, I'm just gonna start bringing it out, deepening it, and then do the same with the light blue over here. Soften these transitions and then bring it out further out. So I'll come back when that's done, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm starting to block everything in a little bit now. Uh, I'm starting to look a little bit more uniform, I guess, or concise, or whatever you want to call it. Still looks like shit, but we're making progress. 
Uh, so what I'm going to do now, and I want to show you guys a decent example. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is take my base coat red glaze and start blending in the areas between the red and the blue. So this is obviously loaded way too much on this, but I'm going to fan it out a little bit. I think I'm going to add more red in here too. And kind of go through here with a good amount of layers like this. Just to blend everything and then I'll probably come in with my, um, with my highlight red, just tie everything in on the red. And then I'll move on and do the same thing with the blue, start filling everything in and so on and so forth. But it's basically just, just a lot of really thin red glazes now that are going to go in here. And I'm sure that's going to add a nice purple hint to it, which is what I'm going for in the transitions. And I'll probably overdo it to where I bring it out too far, but that's okay because then I can come back with my blue and tone it back down uh, the further I go out, basically. But you see over here is already kind of kind of starting to blend it in, so that's exactly what I'm going for. And obviously this feather here I'm going to have to go back and fix, but this is the sort of, sort of back and forth, I guess, that I'm that I'm going to be doing now on these and it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be like I don't want it to get cut off like exactly on when where the one feather ends and the other begins because then it's just going to be way too too uniform so I'm kind of going to cut it halfway through some of these feathers just to make it look a little bit more natural but I don't mind going a little over just because again I'll come back here with some blue afterwards anyhow so if I go a little over it's okay because then I can just cover it back up with the blue afterwards but I'm going to do a few layers of this and I'm going to do a few layers of the blue afterwards and I'll show you guys what the result is and then we'll go over and fix the highlights on the feathers here that I'm actually covering that I'm not supposed to be and then we'll move on to to this section here with the light blue and the dark blue do the same thing just help the transitions out and then what we'll do is actually come back and highlight all of the all of the edges here individually but uh, let me work on the red here and then I'll come back and show you guys the results. Alright folks, let's talk about the mess that UC made and the mess that UC's fixing now. <laughs> um, it actually looks a lot worse on camera than it is. So, I didn't really have a game plan going into this, so I kind of went into it without a game plan. Here, these transitions I'm done with and I like them. Here, I hated it, so I actually went over with some Drakenhof Nightshade and just kind of blended it all in. I'm kind of going to start from scratch fanning out of here now. I'm letting this dry on this side. So, what I'm doing, or what I'm going to be doing now, is going in with my navy blue. And I think I'm also going to throw in some... Where is it? Oh, here it is. Some Cantabric blue for some of the highlights. And I'm literally going to, like I did here, which I went in feather by feather, I'm literally going to start doing the same thing with these up to a certain point. Um, so, yeah. So, that's what I'm going to start doing now. And I'll come back to you guys when that's done to show you what it looks like. Because it's going to take me forever. But that's that's what I'm resorting to. Because, yeah, I, I screwed up. I didn't really have a game plan going into this. So, I wasn't really... I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. So, I, yeah, it, it didn't look good at all. It still looks like crap over here. But I think I should be able to blend that in. So, anyhow, let me, uh, let me start fixing my problems here. And then I'll come back to you guys to show you what it looks like. 
Okay, so I'm at a point where I dropped my brush, so hold on. <laughs> I'm, at a, I'm at a point where I salvaged it. Some of it's still drying. I salvaged it well enough to where I'm getting to a point where I can soon say I'm satisfied with it, I guess. Um, next thing is to my mix of... Um, what is this? Cantabric blue. I added a drop of Adriatic blue. And I'm basically going to start edge highlighting out this way and see how far I get. Um, it's getting very late, but I'm trying to kind of push on because I'm actually trying to finish this tonight. So I'm going to keep pushing on, I'll see how far I get, um, I'll come back to you guys with the first edge highlight to show you what it looks like. So I did make some progress on this, uh, I did s salvage it I guess to a point. Um, what we're going to do now is actually dry brush the, uh, the edge highlights on here, it's going to be a lot easier. The fact that these are wings, I think it's, it's okay for us to dry brush even though it might look a little chalky. Uh, so we're going to take our latest uh, highlight color here. I'm going to mix it up. This is this has been sitting overnight, by the way, so i got to make sure this is agitated properly, which it is. Take our flat brush. It's going to be a very, very light dry brush. Now I am using a very soft dry brush as well. Soft bristled one for this only because I'm really just going to lightly touch on this as you can see I don't want to get it too uh, I don't want to screw it up too bad I don't mind if it like goes over a little bit. Not what I would mind if I screwed it up too bad, so I'm kinda trying to find a nice balance here. And I'm gonna continue this off camera because I need a better way to grab this. Uh, I'll show you guys the results. Alright. I think I'm calling the wings done. Now, granted, they're not nearly as smooth as I would have hoped they turned out, but they're not nearly as bad as they could have turned out, so kind of kind of a little trade-off here, I guess, but they don't look bad. Um, what I'm going to do now to finish this off is do the uh, runes on the wings with, uh, with the green, the same way I did all the eyes and and his runes and his uh, arms and stuff and then we'll come back for the base so <laughs> I'll, I'll be back okay at this point we're so close I'm getting pretty excited uh, to finally have this done so I did the um, the runes and the wings whatever you want to call them um, and then I started I base coated the base so what we're doing for the base sorry about the light what we're doing for the base is I base coated it with uh, what was that? Abyssal blue, and then I added some Mojave white, a 50/50 mix. Gonna mix that up, and then we're going to dry brush that on to the uh, the uh, rock here. Even though it's not dry yet, that's okay. I do plan on going over a few. Oh, almost hit my camera. Almost painted my camera over here. Um, I do plan on going in with a few uh, coats over here. So I'm just gonna start hitting it along the edges here, especially along the edges. try and pick out the whole thing. Oh, uh, this is going to, I don't know if I mentioned this or not, this is going to be a lava base. So we are going to do lava in the, uh, in the crevices here. 
But as I said, I'm so close to being done. I'm just excited about it at this point. As I said, I realize that this isn't completely dry yet, but that's okay. It doesn't have to be, the coverage on this doesn't have to be perfectly uniform, so I'm okay with it. Kind of blending one into the other. So while I do this, I do want to, again, uh, do a sh shout out for my uh, my Twitch buddies that I watch. Um, I'll leave links in the in the description, obviously, in the video description, to their channels. But uh, yeah, definitely go check out if you guys want to watch some live painting and after interact with the painters. I've been having a blast, and it's definitely been motivating me to paint a lot more than I would have normally. Uh, go check out um, Centropic. Go check out Miniatures Done, and go check out Solison. Shit, it's Solison83. Um, links down in the description if you're interested, whenever they're online, obviously go check them out. Um, after this is done, so you know I kind of rushed through this in the end because partially, partially I wanted nothing to do with it anymore, <laughs> um, but I also had a deadline to finish this for somebody. Which is today. Uh, so as soon as this is done and dry, I am going to uh, uh, seal it with some dull coat, take my pictures, and go and deliver this to the customer. So I think, uh, I think next figure is definitely going to be something smaller. I haven't figured out what yet, whether it's going to be a Reaper or Dark Sword or just something smaller from Games Workshop or something different altogether. I don't, I don't know. I haven't figured it out yet, but I have figured out that it's going to be something smaller because between, <clears throat> between finishing this and painting the Black Coach last month, I am completely, completely burnt out on these large figures. It's the amount of time and energy that goes into painting these things is incredibly taxing. And I'm not really complaining, like, boo-hoo. Um, just, yeah, I need a break from these larger figures, that's all. Uh, so the next one's definitely going to be something smaller. And I've been promising a model kit for a while now. Or, or a model build for a while now. But I think I'm going to hang... hang uh, I'm going to hold off on that for a little bit longer. Um, as I said, I do need to recuperate from these large projects a little bit. It, it's, you know, a big thing about it is um, obviously these take so much longer to complete. So I feel like I'm getting less and less done as the weeks go by when you're working on something this big because you just don't see the results as quickly, so... I think that's a big thing for me, so I, I'm gonna I'm gonna knock out a few small figures in between my next one, uh, just to kind of just to kind of get some more done and feel a little bit more accomplished. Anyhow, we're gonna leave this I'm gonna leave this be, just like this. I'm going to base coat the lava, and then I'll come back to you guys. Okay, so I got my base coat down of Mars Orange, and I laid it down quite thick. As you can see, it's still drying in a lot of places. That's exactly what I was going for. Number one, I do want it blobby and thick. Uh, just artificially kind of create the, uh, the illusion of, of lava flow. Number two is we're going to take some Soul Yellow. Uh, right out of the, right out of the tube, right out of the bottle, rather. And I'm just gonna start 
dabbing it in here. And kind of mix it in with the uh, with the orange. Now nothing doesn't have to be very. It doesn't have to be very precise. Now I'm not really looking for. I'm not really looking for precise blends or anything like that with this. I'm just looking. I'm just looking to get this color mixed in here. See what it's doing here? It's kind of. In its own way, it's kind of giving it like an artificial. Artificial light glow kind of deal, if that makes sense. So that's what I'm going for. I'm trying to make sure I don't make it too too pronounced in too many places, but it's okay if you leave like a, like an actual line somewhere somewhere along the way. Uh, but right now, all, and I'm not going to, up to the very very edge of the uh, of the lava, obviously, because I wanna want to keep the orange at the very edge. And I'm also going in really thick with this. Um, I do want this to take its time drying. Only because I'm going to do this with every layer that I put down. Don't worry if you get any on the uh, on the rock. Uh, number one, you can kind of pass that off as OSL. Or you can... Uh, or we're going to go back later and then actually fix it. I'm going to end up going in there and fixing it. See how... See how this is creating like a... It almost looks like it's flowing. Take your brush in here and just kind of... And now also, one thing, one thing you might be noticing, I don't know how well you guys can see that on camera, yeah, you should be able to see it, is there's like a black streak in here. Or dark streak in here. That's because the um, the rock wasn't dry everywhere yet, so that colors are also mixing in with it. But I'm okay with that because obviously when lava cools, it turns into stone. So there could be that that sub uh, or on the surface there could be that layer that's already uh, already beginning to cool. And so leaving us with 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 like a blackish uh, blackish tone on the surface, if that makes sense. But and I will go in here after the fact and actually fix the uh, some of the rock around here because yeah, it was looking kind of crappy here, so on and so forth. Along the edges here, I'm only going to be very, very minimal here. I don't want to, I don't want to overdo it since that's dry already. I don't want to overdo it. So, like a like an inner edge highlight just to kind of make the rock pop out along the uh, edge of the base just like that alright wow this is still very wet Ooh, excuse me yellow and now gently tap it in here into the middle and this time around I actually don't mind this just being pure yellow in the middle here see that And it will mix with the orange, obviously, so if 
if you feel like you're not getting enough yellow in there, do what I just did and re-dip your brush in the pure yellow and just go back in here. And if you get it too thick, or you know, if you get a blob of paint that's too thick, like here, I almost got it too thick, but I think we'll be able to get away with it. Then just clean your brush and, and go in here with a clean brush and just kind of blend it all in together since the paint underneath is still wet. I don't want this to be like super smooth because it's, it's lava and it's flowing and I do want it to look kind of rough, if that makes sense. Which I think I'm achieving here. way to get in here and I think I'm just gonna go back to the same maybe yeah that's good enough That the reason I'm filming this entire process is not only not only do I actually think it's actually actually a pretty interesting way to paint lava. I picked this up by accident. I was doing a bunch of um, blood letters a few years ago, and I was kind of screwing around with the base, and I kind of picked this up by accident. It works, so it looks all right. Um, number two is through all the. Uh, through all the turning of the model, you guys get a better better idea, hopefully, of what the entire thing looks like. There will be pictures at the end of this video, so get a much clearer clearer view, but I figured. I figured why not. It's already long enough as it is, but since we're so close to being done with this, I'm okay with uh, with making it even longer. Accentuating the rock over here. Alright, now last thing we're going to do is add... No, oh, this is a little rough over here. Can I do that? That's better. Now last thing we're going to do is add some white into this mix. Some pure white. really shine and then off camera I'm going to go back fix the base do the edge and come back to you guys with a final final quick little walk around final thoughts and me plug in my uh, my twitch buddy some more because I gotta tell you if it wasn't for me uh, watching Twitch streams while painting this, I probably either would have given up a long time ago, like I did originally, or I would have taken a lot longer to finish it. As I said, the Twitch streams have been very, very motivating as far as actually getting work done because I get to chat to people, you know, with the same interests, so on and so forth. I get to be entertained by the streamer while watching him or her uh, work on, on whatever they're working on, and since the one distraction I'm usually distracted by is my computer while painting, well, while the stream is gone, there's really not much else I can do on my computer, so it kind of kind of disqualifies me like getting distracted by games or anything like that. Anyhow, I think that's... I think that's good enough other than here. It kind of looks... 
rough-ish. There we go. Okay, I'm going to let this dry. I am going to fix the rock, fix the stone, do the uh, edge of the base, and I'll come back to you guys with final thoughts. Okay, let's talk. <laughs> um, here he is. Let me show you guys the base first. While well, that's still drying. Skin, the blues. Alright. So, this has been a journey and a half for me on this guy. Um, I will say, I'm very happy with how the skin came out. I'm really happy with how the NNM came out. Silver and gold both. I'm okay with the wings. I'm not super, super, super excited with how the wings came out. Like, they could have come out a lot better. But given how they started and how much I screwed them up, I'm okay with how they came out. I'm okay with keeping them like this, and I'm okay with how they came out. This has been a journey and a half over the last, what, year and a half, almost, or maybe longer than that at this point, and I'm very happy it's over. Um, I'm very happy with how it came out. And it's been a journey both as far as the painting end and as far as everything that's happened in, you know, in real life over the last year and a half that this thing has kind of stuck around for. And so it's, yeah, it's just been a journey. <laughs> um, I don't think I'd ever paint one again. It's such a beautiful model. But it's such a huge model that, holy shit. And keep in mind, I kept most of the armor off on him, too. If I put on the breastplate and everything else, that would have been so much more dicking around with everything. But, I'm okay. I, I, I think I'm... I'm as happy as can be having completely given up on finishing this at one point. And then coming back in and finishing it. So I'm as happy as could be given the given the circumstances. Anyhow, um, let me plug my Twitch guys one more time. Uh, Miniatures Den, Solison 83, and Centropic. Check them out if you guys want to watch live painting. I really enjoy painting them. And you guys, you three, if any of you are watching, if either of you are watching, thank you. I mean, it's it's definitely motivational to watch you guys paint and be able to talk to you while I'm doing this. It definitely helps. Uh, for everybody else. Thank you for watching. Let me know what you guys think. Let me know how you like them. Uh, next video, I don't know what the hell it's going to be. i, I got to take a couple of days off <laughs> and uh, reevaluate my life after I just finished this. So uh, thank you for watching. If you're not subscribed, subscribe. If you like what you see, obviously. If you don't, then well, tell me so I can change it make it better. Um, thank you for watching. Let me know what you think. Subscribe, like share so on and so forth i really appreciate you guys those of you who stuck through this for a year and a half because i know a couple of you have been asking me for the last year and a half when i'm going to finish this so those of you guys that stuck through it i appreciate it thank you so much and until next time